Okay, ma'am. Thank you for that kind introduction, and uh, I sincerely thank uh, Bansi sir for inviting me here. And I think that was automatic claps. And uh, <laughs> the topic is managing hypertension or diabetes, advancing beyond the arbitrary BP numbers. All of us know the problem burden of hypertension and diabetes, and it's a really a growing global menace. And uh, look at the patients with diabetes, and by 2040, these numbers will be prevalent in 10% of the world's population, and 50% of these will be in our Southeast Asian countries. And that's what is most worrying. And this is the patient's diabetes and hypertension together, put together. Look at the numbers. It is 73% of them. And in India, the hypertension prevalence, one in two patients with diabetes have hypertension. So literally, alternate patients have hypertension and diabetes together, and that's our bread and butter, literally, uh, to be frank. And hypertension is twice as frequent in patients with diabetes compared with those who do not have diabetes. And that's the relationship we should understand and try to tackle both together. And this is a trends in prevalence, an Indian view. You look at all the studies quoted from India. So the prevalence ultimately boils down to 25% in the urban areas and about 10 to 15% in the rural areas. Again, a worrying factor, the rural area is fast catching up and look at the prevalence in various studies. And as Asians, we are at a greater risk of adverse effects related to hypertension. This is another worrying point, the uncontrolled hypertension, the burden, plus the risk of adverse effects related to hypertension. So as I said earlier, 74% of diabetes have hypertension associated, and this is what is the other comorbidities seen with that. And again, look at the results from this site study where the overall prevalence of 20.6% was observed with the highest number reported in Maharashtra. This is something, again, to be worried about, and we know hypertension increases the risk of diabetes complications as well. So look at these relative risk complications on the right-hand side, diabetes versus no diabetes, and that's very, very important. And diabetes plus BP versus diabetes alone, look at the relative risk in increase with the CHD, stroke, retinopathy, all the other complications. And of course, proportion of diabetic complications attributable, attributable to hypertension, just to tell you the attributable risk is, with respect to stroke, is 75%, and CAD, 35 end-stage renal disease, one of the commonest problems we face, which literally doesn't have any treatment with us, and that is 50%. High diseases and leg amputation, again, are 35% each. So the excess cardiovascular risk in diabetes is attributable to coexistent hypertension. And participants with hypertension at the time of diabetes diagnosis had a higher rates of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease than did people with diabetes without hypertension. Again, another worrying factor. And look at the all-cause mortality, the plus 72% when these two combine together, and cardiovascular is plus 57%. And that's something all of us should be aware about. So just to ask question the August audience, among your hypertensive patients with diabetes, what is the percentage of target BP which uh, most of us in our practice achieve to our patients is 130, 80? Do you achieve literally these numbers? I think it's about 20 to 40 percent, to be frank, in my practice uh, uh, also, for various reasons, of course. So, so this poor control rate is seen in patients with hypertension and diabetes. So only one out of two patients of hypertension with diabetes achieve the target. That is about 56%. 44% remain uncontrolled despite antihypertensive treatment. So patients are seven times more likely to remain uncontrolled due to non-adherence of the medication. That's the point I want to highlight, the non-adherence, non-compatibility with the treatment. Remember, after three drugs, the adherence drops down to 70%. That means 30% of the times they don't swallow the medications, whatever you give. So that's something all of us should remember. The compliance adherence is what factor we should consider, apart from the which uh, hypertensive you use. So majority of the diabetic patients have uncontrolled hypertension despite therapy. Again, I'm showing the Western data. We just saw the Indian data as well. So the poor control rate of hypertension among patients of diabetes are due to several clinical conditions. And <coughs> diabetic patients renders a patient high risk for renal and CV complications all of our hour. Possibility of resistance to antihypertensive therapy in the treatment of uh, diabetics would be probably change in the ROS activity, the central sympathetic hyperactivity, which as Indians we have little more sympathetic tone, the volume overload, lower BP goal, and 
The last one is a poor compliance. Again, a major factor in our busy practice. None of us stress, none of us ask them about the time of uh, the antihypertensive therapy or the consistency of swallowing the pills. We do not bother about I think that's something all of us should be catering to our patients about the poor compliance with respect to the anti-diabetic therapy. So what percentage of your hypertensive patients with diabetes are treated with a single pill combination? This is to overcome that poor compliance and the adherence part. 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60. I mean, most of us, again, do not choose the ideal combination or the single pill combinations in our practice. So it will be as low as 20 to 40 percent. So we need to aggressively manage the hyperglycemia and hypertension, both with the same intensity. And remember, the chasing A1C will not translate into the cardiovascular benefits as you chase the BP. 10 millimeters of systolic BP can bring down 50 percent of cardiovascular risk. And that's the amount you get benefit translate to your patients if you control the BP tightly rather than chasing your HbA1c. That's something all of us should remember in our practice. So what does the international guidance recommend as an anti-hypertensive treatment? It's a RAS plus diuretic combination. Both ISH and ADA talks about that. And look at the ADA statement. Two drug are SPC. Single pill combinations are recommended now by the bodies. Though in India, we've been using from ages all these complications, I mean, the combination of drugs. So, <coughs> for hypertensive patients with diabetes, what is the preferred combination therapy? AS diuretic or CCB, AS ARB, CCB or ARB diuretic, CC, all these permutation combinations without beta blockers. Of course, these are all the international recommendations, but in Indian context, we do use beta blockers in a certain niche patients. So what is the best evidence till date we have is about intensive BP control. This is age old, uh, uh, the, the records I'm showing here, the ACARD dream, all these add the risk of stroke reduction in the group with the active treatment and the tighter control. This heart trial showed CV events reduced in diabetic patients at a diastolic BP of less than 80, but not in non-diabetic patients. So that's something we should. And this is the uh, UKPDS BP control study where about 1,148 patients were randomized into two arms, less tight and tight control. Those who are on, are not on antihypertensives, those who are on antihypertensive therapy, you can see both the goals were fixed. And what were the results? The tight versus less tight pressure control. You can see the tightly controlled reduces CV events in newly diagnosed type 2 diabetics. That's the UKPDS finding, which is again very, very important data. And this is the CV benefits you get, whether the reduction of heart failure, the amputation or microvascular endpoints, all these extracted from the UKPDS hypertension harm. And this is the benefits we get out of tight control of hypertension. So again, showing the same data where the tight control 758 and less tight control 390 or patients when look at the stroke any diabetic endpoints diabetic death and microvascular complications all were significantly reduced in the tight control arm this is again i'm showing the various randomized control trials wherein in diabetic patients the systolic bp reduction including ukpds and heart trial which i showed you earlier have clearly shown the cvd risk reduction which is significant so let us talk about quickly about the advanced bp lowering the forgotten twin combination which been there based on these trials which we have already neglected so far. And remember, Advance had about 500 Indian patients also. It was a landmark trial with 11,000 plus patients. Primary endpoints, macrovascular outcomes and microvascular new or worsening nephropathy and diabetic eye disease I can see. That was the secondary endpoints. And significant reduction in CV and renal endpoints with parenteropril indipamide was seen. You can see their combined micro and microvascular events reduction, the primary endpoint, total coronary, total renal events, and very significant. You know, you can see the p-value significance there. And both these were significantly the total renal events and the primary endpoint of maze events were reduced 9% and 21% respectively. And this is the summary of renal benefits in the other trials called prevent, regress, and retard, where the USUR was basically more than 150 and it normalized. Further <coughs> comments about the end organ benefits of perindrophil and endopamide is the proof of vascular legacy. These patients were followed up for 10 years and there was a CV mortality of 12% and alcohol mortality of 9% reduction even after following for 10 years that was called as advanced on uh, segment and in this hypertensive patient with diabetes, the SPC should be initiated early and continued long term at the optimum dose of sustained vascular benefits. So this meta-analysis clearly shows that the effect of AS versus ARBs in the all-cause mortality, CV deaths and CV events in patients with diabetes, you can very clearly see the AS versus placebo and the active treatment, the risk reduction with respect to the primary endpoints are significant. Some of them are significant with the uh, statistically. 
and ARBs versus placebo definitely is something which we need to think about because there is no solid data so far with respect to the ARBs. So ACE inhibitors reduced all-cause mortality, CV mortality, major CV events in patients with diabetes. This is the Cochrane review, which is again, we know the value of Cochrane review whenever it is published, the antihypertensive agents for preventing diabetic kidney disease. So you can see there, outcome in the ACE group versus no treatment group, new onset kidney disease, all-cause mortality, doubling of serum creatinine and blood pressure reduction. You can see the number of studies they've reviewed and they found that the ACE inhibitors prevent new onset diabetic kidney disease and death and in normal albuminuric people with diabetes, Compared with placebo and benefits from ARBs, you can see on the right-hand side, for people with diabetes should be interpreted with little caution. Now, strong and relevant outcomes of advanced versus ERB studies, you can clearly see again there, the SPC of parenteropril endopamide had a reduction in renal outcome by 21%, reduction in mortality by 18 and 14% respectively, whereas on target roadmap with Volmisartan, Telmisartan, Irbisartan, you can see the reduction in mortality was not seen, though there is a reduction in renal outcomes in all these trials. What about the evidence of BP reduction with parenteropril and indopamide combination? This is the latest publication in 2021 where the significant BP reduction with parenteropril and indopamide with the pooled analysis in diabetic patients was, <coughs> was clearly seen. You can see the systolic and diastolic BP reduction. And patients uncontrolled and parenteropril indopamide, additional advantage of switching to triple drug. Again, we're talking about compliance here and the combination of synergistic combinations of triple drug with parenteropril, endopamide, and amlodipine, which clearly showing the strong BP reduction along with good mortality benefit. This is called as a proof study, and there is one more study called PNE study, wherein the reduction is 37 and 17 systolic and diastolic respectively, very clearly, and these are comparable to your advanced study as well. This is our own Indian study, which was published in JAPI. We were part of this clinical trial also. Mean BP reduced by about 30 by 15 millimeters of mercury in a span of two months, end of 60 days, the patients reached this target. We had about 218 patients and it was a very significant study with 91% compliance rate and 99% patient satisfaction. This is another latest study, which is called as a Brisigella study from Italy, where they studied the percentage, uh, I mean, they studied the patient for about 12 years with this combination and look at the better preservation of metabolic profile and lowest MACE incidence were seen with this combination versus uh, ARBs and the other. It was a 10-year-old study. So to summarize, excess cardiovascular risk in diabetes is attributable to coexistent hypertension. Hypertension is difficult to control in patients of diabetes due to clinical conditions such as volume overload, change in the RAS activity, and central sympathetic activity. The advanced trial clearly show the, showed that the parenteropril endopamide provide significant CV and renal benefits that are sustained over a long time. And in view of differential benefits on mortality and morbidity, the ACE inhibitors appear preferable, which most of the bodies also say, ACE inhibitors slash ARBs. And new pooled analysis suggests that the SPC of parenteropril endopamide is very effective in reduction of BP as early as two months in our Indian context. And this triple drug combination with parenteropril endopamide amlodipine provides strong BP reduction and Treatment with this triple drug shows uh, total mortality reduction by about 28%. Thank you very much for patient hearing.